May your life be transformed with this message. Subscribe to our channel so you won't miss notifications. And share this word to bless more lives. Let's work together to win souls. Thank you very much, brothers and sisters. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. This evening, while I was sitting there, I have received new revelation which I cannot find in the Bible. That is that when we all go to heaven, we all speak in Spanish. From now on, I should study Spanish very fervently. Well, I'm very privileged to be invited this evening here on this wonderful platform, and I really feel the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ, and He's going to perform wonderful miracles in our lives, because I know that Jesus Christ has not come here for vacation. He came here to work, and He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So now. I will read a verse of scripture for you. Hebrews 11, chapter, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a great testimony. Israelites had two different paradigms of life in Egypt and in the wilderness. The old paradigm of life in Egypt were completely human-centered life without God. They were living by human-centered life. And human sense knowledge life was prevalent. They were depending upon seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, and feeling. So they were completely dominated by the sense knowledge. And also they only trusted in human ability. Those were the component of their lives in Egypt. They were living by human power. But when they came out of Egypt, the new paradigm of life in the wilderness was starting. Because they were commanded to live by God-centered life instead of human-centered life. And also, they were commanded to live by the revelation knowledge, not by the sense knowledge. They were supposed to receive the revelation from the Lord, and by the word of God, they were commanded to live. And also, God commanded them to live by faith now. No more by human ingenuity, but God wanted them to live by faith. And because of that, naturally, there were great struggles between two paradigms of life. Because they were all trained in Egypt to live by human-centered life, to live by sense knowledge, and to trust in their human ingenuity. But now, they are out of Egypt, and they are commanded to live God-centered life, and by the revelation knowledge, and they were commanded only to live by faith. And that is the reason they were in great struggle in their life. When they all came to the Red Sea, they were struggling because there were no bridge to cross over the Red Sea. There were no ships to carry them beyond the Red Sea. And here, the Pharaoh was attacking them again with all of it was the only superpower under heaven in those days. So the superpower, the Egypt, was taking all the military forces to attack the Israelites again. And they were stranded in front of the Red Sea. According to their old paradigm of life, there was no solution for them. Human-centered life could not bring any solution. Sense knowledge was dooming them. There was no way to get out of the place when they think in sense knowledge. And also, in human ingenuity, they could not fight against Egypt because they were no military trained and equipped. 
So they were in terrible situation. All of the Israelites was crying, and they become negative, and they were complaining to God and Moses. Moses, why do you bring us out from Egypt to this sandbar and try to get us killed by the Egyptian military power? And they were at a loss what to do. Terrible situation. But Moses was calm in his heart because Moses was not living by human strength. He was not living by the world principle. Moses was living by the new paradigm of life. He was God-centered. He was revelation-motivated. He was living by faith, so he was trusting in God. And when the Pharaoh was nearing to Israelites, Moses received the revelation knowledge. God said, Moses, reach out your stick over the Red Sea and let the Red Sea divide it. That was revelation knowledge. There was no way to get out of the situation, but suddenly God's revelation knowledge come. And Moses' faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Moses believed and he announced the word and Israelite also believed, and God performed the miracle, and the water was divided, and they crossed over the Red Sea like walking on the dry land. And the struggle was calmed down. But again, when they were passing through the desert, the struggle came again. They were thirsty. They could not find any water for three days, and they were crying for the water. And finally, they found a Pool, but it was bitter, poisoned, and they could not drink. And they were desperate. And again, people were complaining and really crying to the Moses. Moses, give us water. Give us water. And uh, according to their Egyptian principle, their, their paradigm with which they lived in Egypt could not solve any problem because there was no water. The water was poisoned and the uh, very bitter. And uh, by thinking the human-centered life, there was no solution. By the sense knowledge, they could not find any way out. And by trusting human ingenuity, they could not make the poison water into a good, sweet water. And the paradigm of Egypt failed completely. Then the new paradigm with which Moses was living intervened. Moses was living God-centered life. He was living by the revelation knowledge. And he was living by trusting in God. And he prayed and waited upon the Lord. In this situation, all the Israelites did not pray and wait upon the Lord. They were just complaining. But here, Moses was waiting upon the Lord and praying. Then God's revelation came to him. God asked him to break the branch of the tree and cast it into water. And when Moses did it, the water turned into sweet water, and all they drank, and they were satisfied. But still, they could not learn the lesson. When they ate all of the food they carried out, they complaining, Moses, how could we survive without food? Here now, we can't plant anything to gather any fruit. So we have no food. We are going to all starve to die. And again... They were living by standard of the Egyptian paradigm of life. Human-centered life could not bring them any solution. Sense knowledge told them that they would die by starvation. And they could not trust that their ingenuity because they had no skill to solve the problem. But here, the new paradigm intervened. And Moses came in and he prayed to the Lord. He was living God-centered life. He was living by the revelation knowledge. He was living by faith in God. And God intervened. And God opened the door of heaven. And every morning, there were showers of the food on the ground. Mena. And the food problem was solved by the miracles of God. And all the Israelites praised God and they were happy. But still... They were struggling because they had not enough water while they were traveling. And it was so scorching heat, really made them thirsty. 
And they could not solve the problem wherever they went, but any places, Moses could bring the solution because he was not living by an Egyptian paradigm. He was living by godly paradigm. And when he prayed, God opened the rock and the water poured out of the rock. Miracle after miracle occurred. You know, the trouble is that Israelites were out of Egypt physically, but Egypt was in them in the wilderness. They could not get Egypt out of their lives, even though they were out of the Egypt physically and now traveling in wilderness. Because of the Egypt in them, the paradigm of life in Egypt was really squashing them, quenched them, and they could not be liberated. Without being liberated from the Egypt, from their heart, they would never successfully travel through the wilderness. Because God once called out them from Egypt, God was giving them new paradigm to live by. No more Egypt. New paradigm to live by God-centered life, by God's revelation knowledge, by the faith in God. They were supposed to live by the miracle. It took more than 40 years for them to learn new paradigm, but still they could not completely change. Many people say, that, why did they pass through the wilderness for 40 years? Because it will take only 10 days if they directly walk from Egypt to the Palestine. It took 40 years for them because they did not learn the new paradigm quickly. They did not learn how to live by faith. They were all try to live by their sense knowledge, by their seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, and all of these things hinder them to come into the land of Canaan quickly. God tried to bring us to the abundant life quickly, but many people ask me question, Pastor, why should you pass through this dry land? Why should I pass through so many trials and difficulty? I tell them to educate you so that you may live by faith. I say that the quicker you learn the lesson, the faster you will enter into the land of Canaan. But sometimes people are learning very slow, passing through many trials and sufferings. Finally, they could get out of the Egyptian paradigm. We are the spiritual Israel that came out of the world into the kingdom of God. And we have the same trouble as the physical Israelite had in their lives. Because even though we are out of the world, but still we keep world inside of us and we try to live by the world standard. That is our trouble always. We are really struggling. We have daily struggle because all the paradigm of life in the past life in the world challenges the new paradigm of life in kingdom of God. Always the devil comes and brings all the paradigm of life. Now see... This is impossibility. You are going to die by this sickness. Now you are going to fail this business because this is the bad season for the business. And you will be left alone because nobody is going to love you. And you will have no peace and joy in this life. Always they, they will try to bring the worldly paradigm of life and scare the people. But we are out of the world, so we should get the world out of our lives. We should bring the new paradigm of life. We are no more old person, because the Bible says, Whosoever be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Lo, all things have become new. We are not going to live by old Adamic life. We are new human beings. We are newly created according to the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our old person has been crucified together with Jesus, and buried together with Jesus, and resurrected together with Jesus Christ. And we are Jesus men and Jesus women. So we must live as Jesus lived. We must live by the new paradigm of faith. People, unbelieving people living in the world are living by the old paradigm of life, by their sense knowledge. But we are going to live by the revelation knowledge. 
Many Christians are not living according to the riches and the blessings which God prepared for them because they could not get the world out of their lives. Then people are asking me question, how can we live in new paradigm of life? You, you know, we should be educated. This is a wilderness, and we are now passing through the wilderness like Israelite. God tried to teach us how to live by faith. It's very, very difficult for them to pick up the faith quickly. Because always the old paradigm of uh, sense life harass them and oppress them and scare them. To live in the new paradigm of life, number one, you must renew your mind completely with revelation knowledge, the Bible. Every morning, I am renewing my mind. I've been in ministry for 47 years, 47 years, every day, morning and, uh, mid, uh, and middle of day and evening, I renew my mind. I look to the cross of Jesus Christ. I see the redeeming power of Jesus. I say, Jesus, by thy shed blood, I am forgiven, I am declared righteous, and I have glory of God. I'm a new person. I see that vision and dream in my heart, and I believe. And I declare always to myself and to God, I am forgiven righteous person with the glory of God. And the Lord, I have set off all the world and the devil because of the blood of Jesus Christ. I am free from the world and devil. And I have sanctification and the Holy Spirit. I am a man of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells in me because of the redeeming grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh God, I thank you for the Holy Spirit. Then I look to the cross and I say again, Jesus, by your stripes I am healed. You took my infirmities and carried away my sicknesses. So sickness and disease are lying vanity. I have been healed legally since 2,000 years ago. And all of these sickness and disease which are hanging on my body is lying vanity. I will not accept it. Those are illegal parking. I say to the sickness disease, you sickness disease, you are illegal parking. You have no right to park on my body. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke you to get out of me. I renew my life over and over again. And I see myself through Jesus as a whole person, healed person, healthy person. And I believe and I praise God. When we travel through this earth, we become sick here and there because we are human beings. But every time when they will deliver the letter of sickness, it is don't sign and accept. This is not mine. You know, wrong address. Get out of me. Because you are the renewed person. Renewed person. Then I look to the cross and I see that Jesus Christ took all the curse. When Adam fell from the cross, grace, he brought calamity, the curse. God said, because of you are backsliding, the earth is cursed, and the earth is going to bring the thorns and the thistles in your life. You know, since that time until now, thorns and thistles are springing up in our lives, between husband and wife, hatred and doubt, and, and all of those Thorns and thistles rise up in the home. The thorns and thistles rise up and divide family and in business. Thorns and thistles rise up and curse the business. And international relationship is cursed because all of this curse, human beings try to take away the curse by every means, but they have failed. But 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ went up on the cross carrying all of the curse that Adam brought to our lives. Bible says it curses everyone that hangs up on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon Gentiles. Jesus Christ was hung up on the cross and cursed, because Bible says curses everyone that hangs up on a tree. In your place, in my place, Jesus was cursed and hung up on the cross, and by his blood he cancelled all the power of thorns and thistles. We are no more cursed. We are blessed by the blessing of Abraham. You must claim that. 
Every day you must claim that. You are not cursed, you are blessed per person. One of deacons in Korea was a good Christian, but he did not have the knowledge of God. And he was failing, he was fisher. But a fish would not come into his fishing net. And unbelievers, they were having better fishing field, and they get all the fish, and he was poor, and he was having a, a bad fishing field, and he could not get catch many fishes, and he was ready to be bankrupted. It was uh, uh, near the Christmas day, but he, his company was going to be bankrupted December 27, and he was desperate. So he was praying with his wife together, Oh God, we are Christian, but how come that we cannot receive blessing from the Lord? Then God gave them the revelation. One day he was reading Galatians 3, chapter verse 13. Bible clearly said that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that hangs up on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come, come upon Gentiles. His eyes was open. He said, is this true? Am I redeemed from the curse? Then how come that I have been living in curse all these years? Because I did not know the real situation of redemption for my life. He said, I have been deceived by the devil. And he began to see himself completely delivered from the curse. And he saw himself blessed by Abrahamic blessing. So, so he determined, I will sow the seed of faith and I will claim the miracle of Abrahamic life. And his pastor was a retired pastor in the city and he was very poor. He was driving a very old car, more than 30 years. So he talked with his wife, let us buy a new car for our pastor as a seed of faith. Because he is driving old car and old car has always trouble. And he is stranded on the street many a times, so we'll buy a new car for him. But his wife said, we have so much debt. So anyway, we have debt, so let's add more debt. <laughs> so they paid $30,000 and bought a real new beautiful car to the pastor. And the pastor was in glory. He was so happy without even knowing the real situation of this deacon. But they said to the pastor, if God blesses us, we will renovate our building. The building was built more than 30 years ago, and it was raining and leaking, and the wall was broken. So when we make success, we will rebuild this building. And the pastor was overjoyed. And the pastor reached out and touched them and gave all the blessing what he could do. Well, I myself personally do. When people bring offering to me, I bless more than those one who do not bring anything. So, pastor, out of his heart, he fervently blessed them. So, on the Christmas day, now two days before the bankruptcy, he sent his brother to the sea field, go see if we have anything in the net. And soon, hand the phone, telephone come, brother, Miracle occurred. He said, what is miracle? He said, in our net, there are 5,000 yellow fish. Yellow tail, I say yellow tail. <laughs> yellow tail is a big fish, isn't it? It's real big, bigger than the baby. <laughs> we have 5,000 yellow tail in our net. He asked, how about the, the northern net and the southern net which belong to others? Not one yellow tail is in their net. Not one. Only to our net, we have more than 5,000 yellow tail. And, you know, yellow tail, they all come and pass the northern area and the southern area and they come to the middle, lined up, and it took more than 10 hours for them to come into this net. Because uh, the hole is very small to enter into net. So to enter there, the whole 5,000 yellow tails should stand in line in queue and they wait. 
One by one, says, go fast, go faster, go fast, I come in, go fast. That was the miracle of God. You know, those yellow tail would not wait too long. They are impatient. They won't long stay in queue for such a long time. But for more than 10 hours, they were standing in the line and they waited for their chance to enter into the net. As for the fishers, if they could get catch 500 yellow tail in an autumn, that would be a great abundant fishing, they say. But it was not autumn, this is winter time. Winter time, the yellow tail would not come to Korean Sea. But 5,000 of them come and they hold their fish to the uh, harbor and they received $50,000. So he paid up all of his debt, which cost forty-seven, four hundred, uh, four hundred seventy thousand dollars, and uh, out of the five hundred thousand dollars which he gained from that sale of the fish, and uh, with the rest of the money, his wife said, "Now we get this money, so let's use this money for our home." But the husband said, "No." We had better rebuild our church, revamp our old buildings, and refurbish. So they spent that money, and they had no money even after having such a big hole of the fish. But they were free from bankruptcy, they were free from the debt, and they were praising the God. Still, they were praising God, praising God, and after one month, when they went out to see if something was caught in the net, and there were big whale in the net. Big whale. That is very precious in Korea. Actually, it is uh, prohibited to catch a quail. So quail came into the small net, twisting his body, and he committed suicide inside of the <laughs> quail, uh, net. The big whale was dead. And they were overjoyed. And they brought out a mink whale and sold by $50,000. So that was a bonus from God to the chicken king. He came to me smiling. He says, Pastor, before I got the knowledge of God's blessing, I toiled 365 days, but still I could not eke out an existence. But after knowing the truth, when I was set free from the curse, from the thorns and thistles in my mind, when my mind was filled with the glory of God and Abraham's blessing, then God intervened in one day, God solved, solved all the problem. He said, now from now on, I'm going to work for the Lord 364 days, and then I work one day for the, my business, because God can solve all of my problem in one day. It is not God's will for you to live in poverty-stricken life. When God created heaven and earth, He said six times, it was good to see, 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 it was good to see. It is not good to see the poor people. Poverty is not good to see. Because God never created poverty in the Garden of Eden. God is not specializing on poverty. God is specializing on abundance because the Bible says, devil comes to rob you, kill you, and destroy you, but I come to give you life and life more than abundantly. God is a good God. God wants to give good things to your life. To do that, Christ was crucified on the cross. And he took your curse and my curse, your poverty and my poverty, and he declared the blessing of Abraham to us. Every day I'm looking to the cross and I'm renewing my mind. For 47 years, oh God, I have the Abrahamic blessings, and blessings following my life. When I go to the wilderness, wilderness will be blessed. When I come to home, home will be blessed. When I take a pastor, then my church will be blessed. Forty-seven years ago, 
my wife and when, me and my mother-in-law, when we started church, we started in a very old, leaky American marine tent with a straw strewn on the floor because we had no chair, no pulpit. We were absolutely poverty stricken. We had nothing to eat and we were suffering terribly. But God showed me that God would become the total resource of my life. That God, when, when God showed me that God was a good God and God loves me, then I could be very positive. I could believe God because God loves me and God is a good God. And I claimed the Abrahamic blessing. And as a result, now you see how much I blessed. Now, as for me and my wife, it is more difficult to be poor than to become rich. Because God poured out his blessings. I cannot become poor because uh, 780,000 people, each of them would be overjoyed to invite me for one night to stay in their home to pamper my life. <laughs> See, so I have no chance to become poor. Whenever I look back, 47 years ago, I say, God, you really came into my life and you took away all the thorns and thistles. You have blessed me so tremendously. You are wonderful, God, and I praise you and I renew my mind again and again. Then I look to Jesus Christ on the cross and Jesus, I said, Jesus, you died with my death. You killed my death on the cross, buried, and you resurrected. So I'm sharing your resurrection together with you. So there will be no death at all for me because even though I die, then the way through the death will be all lightened up by the light of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There will be no darkness to our future. No dark death. All changed into the light of Jesus Christ. <laughs>